Is there a situation with your child that has shown up time and time again? Maybe you've tried to lecture your 12 year old about the hours they spend playing video games or that your teen keeps coming home way past curfew or maybe that your toddler does not listen over and over no matter how many times you ask them to listen and to do something. No matter how many times you've lectured or told your child about something over and over again and they still don't listen. It can be so aggravating. I understand and I know you are not alone. So if this situation or others like it have come up constantly in your home, I want you to let you know that you are not alone. Hi, I'm Kara and I'm a positive parenting coach, mother of two. I am here to help you learn how to parent from a place of peace, love, and connection. And I am here to share five steps in how you can have an empowered conversation with your child. First, I want to address what does it mean to have an empowered conversation? What is it? It might not be something that you're familiar with or have heard before. So let me just give you a brief overview of what an empowered conversation actually means. Having an empowered conversation provides such a powerful medium for change. We as parents can change how we have conversations with our children, can yield amazing results in their behaviors and their attitudes towards certain boundaries or values or just the way that your family works. I like to think of empowered conversations as you're coming to someone that you maybe have a difficulty talking to or there's a kind of hard situation or something that you've been noticing in your family or something that your child is doing a lot such as playing video games you've asked them you've lectured them you've told them you've restricted it you've taken away the video games but their behavior their attitude is just not changing and a situation like this having an empowered conversation would be super super important which technically just means you're coming to the situation with your child with curiosity. I like to think of empowered conversations as empathetic conversation, which means you're coming to the situation stating something that you've noticed. You're not coming with judgments or any blame or shame. You're literally leaving that at the door. You're not taking that with you into this conversation because this conversation, this empowered conversation that you're supposed to have is going to empower both you and your child or whoever is in the relationship that you're trying to have this conversation with. And so you're coming to your child stating something that you've noticed and you're leaving, like I said, you're leaving judgments at the door. You're coming with curiosity, with empathy, with wanting to learn more about why they're doing certain things. So that really is what it means to have an empowered conversation is that you're both walking away feeling better, feeling like a team, feeling connected, and now I want to share with you the five steps on how to have that empowered conversation with your child. Step one, state your intention. Intentions are so incredibly powerful and they hold a lot of value when coming to a conversation or maybe a difficult conversation with someone is your intention. Your intention is how would you like this conversation to go? When you state your intention, you are really creating a whole new vessel on how you want your conversation with your child to go. So when you're stating your intention, it's go with it the mindset of to clear something up or to gain a better understanding. Is to, I want to understand why you feel the need to play video games all day. Or to clear something up saying, hey, I've noticed that we've been playing video games a lot and sometimes when I ask you to turn them off, you back talk, you get really angry and you don't listen. That is stating your intention. Your intention is how do you want this conversation to go? You want to clear something up between you and your child. When you're stating your intention, you wanna make it super clear to your child where you're coming from. A great way to start stating your intention with your child is, hey, I've noticed this. I've noticed that you've been coming home past curfew a lot lately. My intention for our conversation is to clear up the reason why we're coming home and what we can put in place. So when you're stating attention, again, make it very clear to your child about what you've noticed and what you want to talk about. Step two is take responsibility for your part. Taking responsibility for your part means you apologize. So you may say, I apologize for not having this conversation sooner. I've been dodging the conversation and I'm sorry for not addressing it. That way to your child, it seems like you're not trying to place blame or force them or anything like that, but you're taking responsibility for your own actions for not addressing the conversation sooner. Step three is to state your feelings and your needs. 
If feelings aren't very talked about or aren't very common or dealt with in your home, that's okay. This may take some practice, but it's okay because you're not perfect, nobody is. And so if feelings and needs aren't that big in your home or they're uncomfortable, that's okay. Allow this time. This time takes time and it takes process. It's not a one and done, okay? It's going to take some time for you and your child to get used to talking this way to one another and expressing feelings and needs. It might take you some time to tap into what you're feeling. Same with your child. It might take them some time to tap in. But don't give up. This does take some practice, so keep on going. So stating your feelings and needs may sound like this. I feel really frustrated when I ask you to turn off the video games and you keep ignoring my request. My need for cooperation really isn't getting met in those moments. I still really want you to enjoy playing video games. I don't want to take that away from you. However, when it comes time to turning them off, I want to figure out a way that you and I can both be happy with. You want to listen through all these steps to what your child is saying as well because they may even want to state what their feelings or needs are about the video games or when you ask them to turn it off and what they're feeling and what they're needing during those moments. This is a time for you to both take turns listening and being empathetic towards one another. Step four is to offer empathy for the other person's feelings. And step three, you just opened up the doorway for vulnerability. And I know that can be uncomfortable to deal with at times. Same for your child. But when you're stating your feelings and needs, it kind of opens up and just clears the air. It sets everything on the table so that you guys can come up with a win-win solution. So in this step, step four, you're offering empathy towards your child's feelings. So you may say something like, I imagine maybe you feel really frustrated too when I asked you to turn off the video games because you just got into a game or you want to finish it up. Or maybe you say, I imagine you feel really annoyed when I am constantly reminding you to turn off the video games. And again, listen to what your child is saying. Hey, the last and final step is step five, make a request. Do not skip this step. A lot of the times when we have these empowered conversations, we go through the first four steps, but we leave the fifth step. And the fifth step is the most important because you're asking, you're requesting for a change, a win-win solution that you and your child can both be satisfied and happy with. When you are making a request with your child, one sentence that does super well is asking, would you be willing, okay? Would you be willing to turn off your video games after five o'clock? Would you be willing to come home by 11.30 on the weekends? Would you be willing to put away your toys after you're done playing with them? This is laying down the groundwork for clear communication between you and your child of what you guys can game plan, a win-win solution moving forward. So if you ask them, would you be willing to clean up your toys after you're done playing with them? If they say no, that's okay. Come up with suggestions and write them down. Maybe it could be, mom helps you clean them up. We could play a game and race to clean them up. Whatever it is to come up with a win-win solution. And one of the best ways you can do that is to write down suggestions. Suggestions that you give and suggestions that your child gives. And then go through the list together of what you guys can both do and what you guys can both agree on for this win-win solution. Not only is this way of communicating super effective with your children, but also with other relationships and adults in your life. If you give these steps a try, I would love it if you would tag me over on Instagram at careforwarda underscore parenting coach and don't forget to follow me there if you found this video helpful make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and then please give this video a big thumbs up and i will see you in the next week's video